Hi, I'm packing some camera gear because I'm going to Sundsvall again to work as a vocal coach at a theater. And do you remember that happy sound engineer from a couple of episodes ago? <laughs> yeah. This time we're going to have a chat. So I'm going to meet Peter Bonde. He's not only a sound engineer, he's a musician also. So see you in Sundsvall. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, a bit tired, but... Tired, uh, yeah, yeah. We've had a long rehearsal yeah. day. Yeah. And I'm pretty impressed because you are sitting and watching the rehearsal and have nothing to do for an hour and then suddenly the director asks you to do something. Yeah. How do you keep? How do you keep the interest and focus up? Uh, sometimes, actually, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I try to to uh, like have one ear towards the the director and the stage, so so he doesn't have to wave and scream like hell <laughs> when, I, <laughs> when I'm floating away. <laughs> Explain, explain what you do. What, what is your work? Right now, uh, for this uh, theater production, I'm uh, uh, I'm doing sound for uh, the microphones for the actors, and we have a lot of sound effects and backing tracks uh, that's, that I'm playing from the computer. It's no live band at, no. at this no. performance. Uh, you have backing tracks, but you are the one that also do all the cues yeah. for sound effects. And yeah. I turn every sound effect and backing tracks on. Is this your normal job like this? Uh, both yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> the normal job in the pandemic era would be like uh, staying at home. So <laughs> yeah, you have yeah. something to do anyway. Yeah, yeah. so that's great. But uh, I've done uh, quite a lot of uh, this stuff. But you've also done theater stuff where there's musicians yep. and a band. And, yeah. Yeah. Theater is not the only thing you do. No. No. I'm, I'm Tell a me. Live engineer mainly for uh, whatever. Uh, everything from yeah theaters, uh, rock concerts, festivals, uh, and also like conferences. And, and a lot of folk music. Am I right? Yeah, I don't do as much sound engineering okay. in folk music. I, I, I uh, have done uh, some recordings yeah. in the studio uh, in folk music. Uh, otherwise, I, I also play, and then I mostly play folk music. You play also? Yeah. You're a musician also. Yeah. What do you play? Guitar. Guitar. And uh, those kind of strumming, strung instruments. Okay. Yeah. So a anything with a pick? Kind of. Kind of, yeah. In a and strange tuning. In a strange tuning, <laughs> okay. So, let me see if I got this right. You're a sound engineer for live concerts mainly and yeah. theater. Yeah. And then you also are a musician yeah. who's performing. Yeah. And you have a studio. Yeah. Do you, do you feel that you learn things from one thing that you can take with you for another thing, like you're learning things as a sound engineer at a theater, which you can take with you as a musician and vice versa. Uh, absolutely. Probably in all the directions yeah. possible. Uh, mostly, I, I guess, uh, live technicians towards musician and musician to live technician. Uh, theater technician to musician is well. I, I can guarantee I can come up with something, but but not right this <laughs> second. No. <laughs> but you can uh, from a musician to technician. You you know when you you're on stage, for example, and you know uh, I want this. Uh, how do I get it? So you so, know the vocabulary, how to say yeah, it, yeah, how to ask for also, it. Also how to actually do it. Yeah. So if the mix in my wedges are muddy, 
I, I uh, maybe I can say, yeah, turn down the bass in my wedges. I don't need it because you just muddy it up. I can hear it well from over there, uh, for example. Yeah. So you can also understand the engineer's uh, problems and yeah. position yeah. and maybe do things as a musician to make it easier for the engineer as yeah. well. Yeah. Or sometimes make it harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know also where the limits are. Yeah. Which, uh, and I know what you can do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you think that you can mix better sound at a concert because you are a musician? Maybe. Uh, it depends a little bit what kind of music, maybe. Yeah. Is it a, a music genre that that uh, I don't know, mm. even uh, not from listening, not from playing? Then maybe it doesn't give me anything to be a musician. Mm. But if it's a, a, a genre that that I I don't need, maybe have to play it, but I know it from listening, and yeah. then I think it uh, it helps that uh, you can see the perspective from the musician and know a little bit where to put things and if it's the guitar that drives the song or if yeah, it's the piano exactly. or you if you can it's hear that kind of stuff yeah. and put it right in the mix and uh, yeah tell me about your workplace here here uh, now you don't have so much equipment no a console and a computer and a sound interface that's yeah. about it actually right here on the on, in my office. <laughs> and uh, I think eight wireless mics or something? Yeah, I have, uh, there are seven actors yeah. that have uh, mics and I have uh, one spare system. Yeah. So just in case anything fucks up. Do you also plan the sound system on a place like this? Like how the PA should be and where the monitors should be? And yeah, and that's uh, actually both fun and not so fun during a theater because uh, uh, in a theater the monitors the wedges they they are not allowed to be seen from no. the audience no. <laughs> so that is uh, both fun and not because you have to hide them and but still get a what's good the problem sound. with that what's the problem with hiding them Ah, you can't put them in the ordinary way so the the actors can hear themselves uh, the best way. You have to hide them and uh, figure out how, where can I put them so they hear something on the but, stage. But not be visible. Yeah. Do you have to fight with the light engineer to where you should put things also? Off. And uh, they are kind people. <laughs> they are kind people. <laughs> so, uh, so for this production, I have uh, I have two wedges on each side in the light towers, the floor lights. Okay, so you solve those problems together. Yeah. Yeah. He had room in the towers for some speakers. So okay. I just put them there. <laughs> So, so how long is the performance schedule? Uh, how guess, how many shows do you do? I don't know the exact number of shows, but I guess the, this uh, production will uh, do shows for a month or one and a half month. Okay, so four to six weeks. Yeah. And how long are you involved during the rehearsal process? Like one to two months. One to two months? Bef yeah, that includes uh, building everything up, uh, pre prepare everything. Mm. Uh, the first time is mainly that kind of stuff. And then during rehearsals, as soon as the director wants to have sounds or want to try the mics, then I have to be in place. And then you're going to program all the cues. Yeah. And also, of course, practice yourselves. So yeah. the, the yeah. cues come in the right places. And program uh, the desk and uh, everything. So everything runs smoothly. And the cues, it's where he press play on like sound effects or songs or outros or background music or whatever. So what's the most common question you get about your job? So uh, what are you actually doing for your living? Is that no, so? No, I don't think so. Uh, like. Uh, 
Do you know what all these buttons uh, make, or can you do this, or even uh, can you please play that song? Ah, yeah, they think you're a DJ. Yeah, yeah, mm. that, that's a common one. Yeah, mm. you have a band, don't you? Yeah, yeah. It's called uh, Bjäran. Can can you translate <laughs> Bjäran? <No. laughs> like a small uh, witchcraft devil, or something like that. I, I'm not going to do follow-up <laughs> questions on that. I don't think so. This is the second the second show we are working together. Yep. And the last time I was a musician yep. and band leader for a musical, which was really, really fun. What I thought was so good when I was a musician and band leader at that musical was that you came with inputs to us musicians also, mostly about the sounds. If I had the right keyboard sounds for a certain part, yeah. you can come with inputs if you had some thoughts. But also a little bit in arrangement. Not much, but it was good stuff that yeah. you came with. And that is one thing I think is important when you have a sound engineer that's also a musician. Yeah. You can think about how all things fit together. Yeah. Yeah. And that all depends what kind of production you're doing. If you're doing ordinary rock club gig <laughs> you can't get in uh, get uh, give inputs to the to the band but that also feels much more inappropriate and then we do this at a rehearsal and uh, yeah in in a show, show like this everyone's working for the same type of goal yeah yeah so uh, if you, i say something to you and you say something to me we all know that it's for the purpose of doing the show the best it can be. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. If you're a sound engineer for a rock band at a club, like a random band, you don't step on their integrity no. to do that. No, I'm not it part of be, the band. It would be different, I think, if you ha would be touring with the yeah, band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Then you can do it. Yeah. Then you're more part of the band. Yeah. If I'm doing a random random rock show, I wouldn't step on their feet. <laughs> Is that important to know when you should say things like that? And yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's, uh, I guess that's one of the, the things I've learned. You learn by being both musicians and a technician. Mm -hmm. You know, what, uh, what do you want from a technician? Both, uh, like, what should he do in the desk, but also as a person. Yeah. It's very nice to have a technician when you're coming as a musician and, and uh, he says hi and uh, just being a nice guy and asks if everything is okay and that kind of stuff. Yeah. What I appreciate as a musician from an engineer is clarity. I like when an engineer says to me, no, I've tried all I can, I can't do anymore. Yeah. I'm fine with that, just give me a clear an answer. Yeah. That I think is important. Yeah, sure is. How about seven quick ones? Yeah. Are you ready? Okay. I say this or that, or a question, and you have to answer as quickly as you can. Okay. City or countryside? Uh, oh, uh, countryside. Summer or winter? I have to say summer. The most versatile microphone in the world? Uh, SM57. Stay up late or go up early? Stay up late. Cross country skiing or downhill? Downhill. Kick or snare? Ooh. Snare. Snare. <laughs> snare. On the way to a gig or from a gig, music or silence? Silence. Mm. I'm gonna ask you to say the Swedish word of today. What's it gonna be? Oh, the Swedish word for today is microphone. Microphone? Yeah. Uh, in Swedish it is? Kind of the same, mikrofon. Mikrofon. I wrote you that. <laughs>